Hello, everyone. Welcome to the undergraduate webinar series, an interactive online platform connecting high school students to the Ashoka community. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar on undergraduate admissions. I am Shorya Chima, and I work with the Office of Outreach at Ashoka University. Joining me today is Moshia Prince, Director, Office of Admissions at Ashoka University. And together, we will be addressing some of your queries on the Ashoka undergraduate admission process. Before we get started, I would like to inform our audience that round one admissions to Ashoka's undergraduate program are open. The deadline for round one is the 23rd of November, 2022. You do not have to wait for your 12th board marks to apply. You can get a confirmed offer of admissions and financial aid even before your final board results are announced. Now, without further ado, let's get started. I would request our audience to kindly type any questions that they might have in the Q&A box provided on their Zoom screen. We will address them towards the end of the session. Over to you, Moshe. Thank you, Soria. Um, hello, everybody. I'm so glad that we can have this time together. Uh, what I would like to do as I start is uh, share my screen and then okay. I hope that's visible. Um, so what I intend to do today as we um, you know, start discussing undergraduate uh, admissions at Ashoka is first maybe give you a little bit of an overview of um, what actually happens um, um, at Ashoka, just so that you get an idea of, um, you know, what to expect should you decide to apply to Ashoka, and I'm hoping that all of you do, um, what exactly to maybe ex uh, expect academically uh, at Ashoka. So let me just quickly walk you through my slides and talk a little bit about each section. Um, so, you know, Ashoka's education is um, holistic in nature, which uh, then means that our admissions process had to be holistic. So um, the only reason for the process, which I will walk you through, is, the process is the way it is, is because of, um, what happens really on campus, in your classrooms, uh, with professors, with your peers, uh, the kind of learning that happens, right? And so given that sort of an education, um, our admissions process is also designed accordingly. So as you know, Ashoka is a liberal arts and sciences university. Um, you know, there's a focus on various schools like of humanities, the social sciences, economics, um, the pure sciences. So, um, it's a space where you can do a BA or BSc honors in any of these, uh, in, in multiple, multiple, multiple um, you know, options that you have, right? And I think for those of you who've had a look at our website, you know that um, you could, you know, maybe major in mathematics and do a minor in English literature, right? Uh, as diverse as that may sound. Um, so the options are many, but what this essentially says is that you have a multidisciplinary education. You don't just sign up for one course or one program and just do that. You have the opportunity to explore various uh, disciplines, right? Uh, across disciplines. And you know, foundation courses are something that you will keep hearing about, uh, mandatory courses that everybody has to do regardless of what uh, program they eventually want to major in. Um, and so multidisciplinary education is something that comes with this, um, uh, with, with, an, with a degree in Ashoka. And the way to do that is an interdisciplinary learning, right? So where you will see where, you know, computer science connects with economics, right? Or uh, literature connects with psychology or biology connects with psychology. So the combinations are just plenty. And you will learn how to study one discipline through the lens of other disciplines. So it's very exciting. So if you're somebody who has a lot of interest, you're really excited about learning, um, I would say that Ashoka is a great place for you to explore and for you to also consider doing your um, undergraduate program in. Some of the things that the education at Ashoka focuses on, and you may have again heard all of these words before, 
but critical thinking, right? The ability to not just take anything at face value, but to be able to look at it or uh, critique it. And, you know, to critique, it's not like just criticizing or being negative. It is to be able to look at something from various perspectives. Uh, that is a very important part of the Ashoka education. Um, collaboration, you'll be working with your peers, you'll be working with your seniors or juniors um, on projects through different centers and offices. And so you're constantly collaborating. And then of course, communication and how you express all that you're learning, you know, uh, is very important. And a, and, a, and a huge part of expressing or communicating would be really through academic writing. And so for that academic reading and research um, play a huge role. So hopefully you are excited about doing a lot of reading, doing a lot of research work, uh, presenting papers, um, you know, whether it's right like submitting a paper or whether it's presenting uh, something that you've worked on. Um, these are some uh, some things that you will experience as a student. Um, it just doesn't stop there, though. Uh, a lot of the courses you'll see also do lead you to think quite practically. And so, you know, problem solving, innovation are very crucial aspects of a liberal arts and science education, right? It's not just about theory. It's also taking that theory into the real world and to see how you can identify issues, whether they're sociological issues, whether they're political issues, whether they're economic issues, uh, or whether they're of scientific nature, whatever it might be, right? So to be able to problem solve, to be able to innovate is very important. And finally, I, I would say this is probably at the core of it all, is that the importance of community life, not just within Ashoka, definitely within Ashoka, but also outside, right? Um, <clears throat> to be able to um, look at your community, whatever that might be within Ashoka or your community back home, whatever that might be, and see what is your, what is the impact that you want to make? What is your focus of uh, impact? And so social impact is again, a very key, th key outcome of this sort of an education. <clears throat> so if this excites you, then uh, let me walk you through the rest of the process, just the admissions process. Um, I'm assuming that all of you are excited about, um, you know, the next step in life. You've been in school for a long time, or maybe you've taken a gap here and now you're looking forward to uh, applying for university. And uh, this is what has probably brought you here. So the admissions process overview uh, is um, slightly complicated, it may seem, but it's not really. So we have one admission cycle, which we have just, uh, as uh, Shoria mentioned, we've opened the forms on October 17th. So we've launched the cycle for the year 2022 to 2023. So this is for the August 2023 intake. We have four rounds. Um, it's a repetitive process. So every round, the same thing happens, right? And so you can only submit one application form. So um, ideally, the sooner you submit it, the better uh, for you. Uh, so... In every round, stage one is your application and assessments. So there's an application form that you need to submit. There'll be deadlines, and I'll show you the deadlines in just a bit. Um, there are mandatory Ashoka assessments that you need to do. Uh, then your assessments and application are evaluated. And then there's a shortlisting of applicants for the interview round. Stage two is the interview round. It's a mandatory interview with a panel, uh, whether it's a single panel or a double panel. It's mandatory uh, <clears throat> for you. And um, post that, there's a holistic evaluation of the candidate by the admissions committee. And stage three really is the decisions or the notification of uh, what happens to your um, application or your candidature, right? So the admissions committee declares decisions. If you get an offer of admission, then the financial aid form is open for students to apply. So this is roughly what happens four times in a year, so apps have opened, as you know. Uh, <clears throat> so let me walk through the calendar. So as you can see here, uh, applications open on 17th October. So applications are just live now till the end of the um, end of the uh, cycle, which would be your round four submission deadline. That's 24th May, but your first submission deadline is 23rd November. 11th January is second round, 5th April. <clears throat> and then 24th May. So as if you can see um, the next row, which is very important, is the assessment date. So for every round, there is one date that's fixed for assessments. And so if you submit your application on 23rd November or before 23rd November, then 4th December, you need to write your Ashoka 
um, assessments. So that's the date you got to remember. And I'll talk a little bit more about the assessments uh, as I go along so you know what I'm talking about. Um, then, of course, the whole process happens that I showed you earlier. And then the decision notification is sent out. There's an acceptance deadline, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You'll get a lot of information from us. And then we're hoping that if nothing happens this year, no external changes, that we'll start uh, your first day on campus. Your orientation begins on 21st of August of 2023. So we've sort of laid this out already for the year ahead, and we're hoping that we won't have to make um, too many changes. Uh, so you can take a look at this. But like we said, and I'd like to reiterate, uh, <clears throat> the earlier you apply, the better it is for you. You'll have a decision. You'll know you can apply for financial aid if you get an offer of admission. And then uh, you can then think about your you know, board exams and other things uh, possibly. Okay. Some general guidelines. Uh, please use only a personal email address. Don't use an official school institutional email address. We want something that will work for the next few years. Right. So please use a personal email address. Um, if you've already started your form or if, if you registered with an official email address or a school email address, um, <clears throat> please go back and start uh, a new form. If you have submitted it, you can't do anything. So don't reapply. But if you have not yet submitted, uh, I request that you uh, please, you know, um, start an application form with a personal email address. You can only submit one application form within the whole year. Um, if you submit more than one, like if you submit in round one and then you decide to submit in round three, the round three application won't be considered. So, um, so duplicate apps or plagiarize the apps, you know, and that's a very important word again, where we are lifting information from uh, that does not belong to you. If you put information that is not yours on your app form without credit um, in your essays or in other spaces, then your candidature becomes not eligible. Um, so, you know, we recommend the admissions office that you fill your application form by yourself. It's simple. There are a lot of instructions um, and give yourself enough time. Like typically it would take two to three weeks. And I think you have that pretty much that much time at this point um, to work on your application form um, and go through the website. We've got details on what makes an application not eligible, what makes an application incomplete. You know, and there are a lot of information on the website. We've tried to say everything that we can possibly from our side so that you're not um, at a loss. Um, and so um, you'll, you'll get all the details that you need on it. So ensure that you don't uh, <clears throat> submit a not eligible form or an incomplete application form, right? Um, again, fill all the correct details that, you know, make sure the attachments are valid. Uh, ensure that you present yourself um, properly, right? Not casually, not half-heartedly, but let your content be, uh, these are these are official uh, information, right? And so um, uh, do that in a more proper way. Um, you know, there are a lot of help boxes on the application form. So if you want details, um, you can just click on those little boxes that are there in the app form. It'll open up and give you some information. If there's some information you can't find, you're always welcome to email and write to us and I'll send, give you the email address toward the end um, and someone will get back to you. But I believe most of what you need is already there, either on the website or on the application form itself. Uh, ideally, I would say when you're done and you're ready to submit your form, get somebody you trust to review your application so that they can give you some feedback. Maybe you can make some changes. Don't let anybody else fill your form. I mean, do it yourself, get some feedback, and then of course submit your form. Um, and then following that is the mandatory Ashoka assessments. So if you want to be evaluated, if you want your application to be evaluated, don't just submit the form and forget about it. Submit the form, then write your assessments, okay? okay. So what does the application form typically look like? These are the various components. There's a section for personal and family details. There's a section for non-academic engagement. There's um, <clears throat> school academics, standardized tests, reading interest, personal essays, you know, letter of recommendations, survey and course preference, uh, support requirements. There's, there are um, attachments required in some, but overall, as you can see, we're addressing, uh, we want to know you personally, we want to know your academics, we want to know your non-academic interests, um, and then there are um, avenues to understand other areas about you. What I'm going to do now is just walk you through these 
uh, components a little bit more in detail just to let you know why it's important. You know, this is not like a one sheet form, right? That you just fill in and submit. Uh, this might require you to spend a little bit of time thinking and reflecting as well. And so we want you to really engage with the application form. So hopefully if I am able to tell you the reasons why we're asking these questions that might probably motivate you to do that. Uh, so the personal and academic details, as you can see, um, I've written it here as well, gives us deep insight about uh, you know, your life, your background, your context, um, just for us to evaluate it completely. You know, for us uh, from the admissions side, this is probably the only window we have into you. Um, and maybe you'll make it to the interview round, maybe you won't make it to the interview round. So your application form becomes very important for us. Uh, so we want to know as much as we can about you through that, right? There are some official identity proof, passport size photographs required. Um, ensure that you fill in the correct ones and you look at the details of what kind of photo you need to fill in, what sort of identity proof works, um, <clears throat> just to ensure that your form is uh, does not become uh, not eligible. Um, and I would also say fill both mandatory and not, you have to fill the mandatory sections, but fill the non-mandatory sections as well. Um, because some of them might actually be relevant, right? And the more information you give us, the better it is for us. So be thorough and detailed and uh, <clears throat> help us know you better through this section. Help us know a little bit about your background and where you're coming from as well. Uh, and, uh, um, the next very important section, of course, is the academic section. And we ask for scores, school scores from grade 10, class 10 uh, onwards, so 10, 11, and 12 to be submitted. Um, we understand that you don't have your class 12 scores for the most part. Maybe most of you don't have it. Um, so we ask you to submit self-predicted scores. Maybe you've never submitted self-predicted scores anywhere below before. What we essentially are saying that is what are you sort of expecting in your class 12 final scores, right? So if you're expecting um, a certain score, you don't have to underpredict or overpredict, right? So be moderate. You know how hard you're working. Um, you know you're probably expecting something. If it if it doesn't, if you don't hit what you're expecting, or you get more than what you're expecting, don't don't worry about that, right? Because these are sort of indicative for us. It gives us a little bit of a understanding about how you've been progressing through the years. Um, so don't over predict or under predict, but try and be close to what you think you might achieve. Um, some schools have the provision for submitting their um, school predictor scores. So if you're not IB or Cambridge, if you're from some other board, we just request you to get it from the school and then attach it. Uh, and there's a spot for school predictor scores. But um, if you're IB and Cambridge, you can fill in the details of your counselor or the person in your school who does send in the details and they will fill it in directly. So you'll find all of this in that section under class 12. Um, I know that some of you probably have not done class 11 given due to uh, the circumstances of the last couple of years. Maybe you don't have, um, you don't have specific um, transcripts or you don't have uh, you know, details or scores or maybe you never had exams. So you will find that you can just write a note and attach it there saying what happened and we will consider it. But if you do have some scores or some exams that you took, then we encourage you to put that down for class 11. Um, so fill in the subject score, the names of the subjects, the scores um, as found on your documents, right? Um, so we do accept SAT and ACT scores. We've always done so. We are going to also accept CUET scores. Um, so we also understand that you won't be taking those now, but as and when you do take them, we, um, uh, especially for CUET scores, we might we will open up a link for you to submit the scores later, like we do for class 12 scores. Um, this is if you do get, um, uh, you know, uh, interviewed and if you get an offer of admission or if you if your decision is deferred or you're waitlisted, then we will ask you for some details. So uh, please note that if you do, if you do not get an offer of admission or if you have been rejected, then um, the conversation sort of ends there and we don't take it forward. So again, gap year students, please don't hesitate to apply. Um, all are welcome to apply. Now, very quickly, I just want to walk you through the non-academic activities and engagements. And 
you know what this does for us is we want to know how you use your time, your resources, your energy, you know, what your interests are, what are you passionate about outside of the classroom, right? Outside of your school academics. What are you pursuing? What are you doing with your time? So we all have 24 hours. And so, you know, I might work for a number of hours, but then there are other things that I do with my time, right? So what is it that you do? So we've given you a spot mandatorily for three engagements or activities, three things where you feel you spend most of your time, three things that you're passionate about. Um, and so there's a place for that. These are mandatory You can f and you need to fill in some details about it. Uh, you can you know, put personal interests, hobbies, leadership positions, competitive level activities, internships, community service. It could be anything. It's really about what you are passionate about. Um, I wanna go back and say one thing that I said earlier, please know that the form has been designed in a way to understand you. So if you can tell us about yourself in every section, that's what we want to know, right? And what you're passionate about is going to be very different than what somebody else is passionate about, right? So we're not going to be comparing forms. We really just want to get to know you. So please use the space carefully. Um, if you are putting competitions or where there are awards, then we would expect you to attach some certificates and some collateral. Uh, if there are some things that are very personal in nature, but you've been doing it consistently, for example, maybe you just love reading and maybe you want to attach a reading list that you've done, or maybe you love writing and you have a blog spot and you could add a link for that, right? Or maybe you're a musician and you, you know, record yourself or you've got a YouTube channel. So, I mean, these are things like give us that information about yourself that we probably wouldn't know otherwise, right? And we do look at, all attachments we do look at um you know what you've done um and uh and yeah so this will be it's it's exciting for us so i hope it is for you as well um please please don't attach your resume uh we don't want anybody's resume we also don't want like 50 certificates in one pdf so pick your pick your top certificates or pick your top interests right so um you know we have a question on reading as well um, we want to sort of gauge your uh, comfort with uh, reading content from books or any sort of text outside your school curriculum, right? Uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of reading and writing at Ashoka. And we, we, we want to know that you are comfortable with not just reading school textbooks, but you're also comfortable engaging with any sort of text. It could be anything, right? Any genre, right? So give us an idea of the genres you enjoy. So you can, um, you mandatorily need to list down three books and their authors, um, but you can add two more. So if you want to use all five, that's fantastic. But at least three, uh, three is mandatory and we'd like to see that. Um, okay, so I want to move on to another important section in the application form. Um, so we want to, uh, we have two essays this time, um, personal essays in the application form. Um, so we want to know and understand how you observe, you perceive, you think, um, you engage with yourself and the world around you. And if you if you look at the prompts, they are um, quite fun, I would say. And we're really excited and looking forward to reading your essays. Um, so make sure that you read these prompts clearly, right? You understand them and you address each part of the prompt um, in a way that you're able to, uh, you know, uh, you and your responses reflect some amount of research and engagement. Right. And definitely honesty. So write these yourself. Right. Um, you know, um, I'll let you just read the essay prompts for yourself. But uh, what I wanted to do very quickly was walk you through um, just a few do's and do nots while you're reflecting on and writing your personal essays. Um, so write your own drafts. Maybe you write four drafts or two drafts or five drafts. So maybe you'll just write one draft. Right. Write it on a Word document or a notepad, and then copy the final version onto the application form. But write your own drafts. Uh, we just we really want to know um, your views, right? There's no right answer. There are no right or wrong answers. It's really about how you read the application uh, uh, prompts, the, S the essay prompts, and how you sort of engage with them and what you have to write. So the first essay prompt is for 400 words, and the second one is for 150. So you're writing a total of 650, um, 550 words, I'm sorry. Um, and so it's not a lot, but hopefully you'll be able to use the space well. So I would say read carefully, 
think deeply. I think while the essay prompts do appear to be a bit lighthearted and fun, they do they do tell us a lot about you. So if you're able to think deeply and engage with the prompt and then be honest and genuine in representing yourself, it will give us a lot uh, of clarity and understanding about you, right? So yeah, so write with clarity, substantiate your points, structure your essays, link your ideas, you know, however you want to write it, but ensure that it is it is clear and it's um, it's able to communicate what you want to communicate. I would say get feedback from someone you trust before you submit it. I think that's always helpful. Um, so you can have someone look at it like you would want to have someone look at your form. Um, don't copy or plagiarize or be dishonest in how you present yourself or your thoughts, right? That's not helpful. Um, don't make unnecessary sweeping statements or ge generalizations or don't think that using very big words and sounding very grandiose is going to make your essays better. Those are not very important. Um, we don't necessarily care about that. Um, so um, present yourself the way you would present yourself, you know, to your friends maybe, right? Um, please don't summarize your achievements or extracurriculars or even submit a standard SOP, right? A statement of purpose because um, that's not what these essays are for. Um, and, you know, when you are writing about yourself, um, like I said in other spaces as well, don't underestimate or overestimate yourself uh, in how you portray, uh, in your portrayal of yourself, right? Um, so, um, yeah, and I would say these are formal, you know, essays. So don't write too informally or casually. Uh, that might not reflect uh, very well. So. Yeah, look at them as essays uh, uh, that give you the space to communicate about yourself. So use the word limit well, like don't be too brief. If it's 400 words, don't write 50 words, right? Maybe 350 words is great. Uh, 400 is even better. Um, you won't be able to write more than that, but don't, uh, so you won't be able to overshoot the limit. If you write elsewhere and you copy paste, your ending may not show up on the form. So please ensure that you're within, within the word limit. Okay. Moving on, um, you know, we have a place for a letter of recommendation. It's not mandatory, but it's highly recommended. This is like a third person perspective for us um, from somebody who knows you well in an academic or professional capacity, someone you've probably studied under, you've worked with, someone who can, who is probably a teacher, tutor, mentor, you know, supervisor, a counselor, somebody, somebody who knows you um, um, outside the Ashoka ecosystem, right? So uh, hopefully they will be able to add value to your ap application form and to your profile. So uh, they, they will get a link you'll have to put in. So speak to them before you write down their name so that they're agreeing to write your letter of recommendation. And if they agree, then you can put down their details. Please don't write incorrect details. If you put in a wrong email address, we won't be able to change it. So submit it correctly, get their permission, submit it correctly, and then remind them so that they can submit the letter of recommendation, right? So there is a deadline and you will see it on the form as well. There's a deadline um, for them to submit the um, LOR. So make sure that you follow up with them, okay? Uh, so hopefully uh, they will add value to your application form. Uh, I just want to say something here. A lot of times students ask, um, you know, should I have my teacher who I know well write the letter of recommendation or the principal of the school who obviously, you know, um, has a bigger role or a bigger position in the school? So I would say the teacher, because we want to hear from somebody who knows you, right? Um, if the principal knows you well enough and you've interacted very closely, that's fine. But uh, please don't go by um, designations please go by how closely you have worked with someone or how well they know you, because that's what they would be able to actually add value to your application form. Okay, so there's a survey section and a cross course preference section, um, you know, give us, see a little bit about how you've been, how you got to know Ashoka and a few other things, and also allows you to pick um, three course preferences that you may possibly want to study at Ashoka. Please note that this is not binding in any sense. This is just for us to give us an idea of what you might be interested in. So um, 
what major you may want to pursue at Ashoka uh, if you do make it. Um, so, but we will not hold you to it, right? So Ashoka allows you to explore and then declare your major later. So don't worry about that. But um, yeah, so the list will be on the form so you can pick the ones that seem of most interest to you. Um, even if you have not studied some of them, if, if you think that you would like to pursue pursue a major that, so you have three preferences and if you think you want to pursue a major that you've no clue about, that's fine as well, as long as there is some sort of interest in that, you know, uh, whether you've studied it or not. Okay. Um, this is an important section. Uh, this section uh, is really about the support that Ashoka can offer you, right? At the time of admissions and also on campus, should you get admission, should you join? Um, so if any of you, you know, have any so any of these uh, situations in your life which require special attention, whether there's English language assistance or whether there's a disability, visual, hearing, locomotor, speech, language, cognitive, learning disability, or a physical health condition, or you know, a mental health issue, or any other condition that may require special attention. So we do have this spot for you to mention it. And in some of these cases, we do um, allow you to requ request for compensatory or extra time during the admissions process, right? So if English language support is something that you require on campus uh, and you believe that you would require some, some time, a little bit of extra time in your assessments, then please um, fill that, uh, you know, tick the right boxes, right? Or if you or if you have a visual impairment, you require a scribe. It'll help us sort of uh, prepare for that as well during the assessments. Um, of course, we will review these, right? And if you are going to be getting the extra time, then we will inform you. In some cases, we may even contact you. So this is very important. Please fill this up. This will not work against you. This is really to support you. And, you know, at the end of this, this section of the form, uh, there is a place for you to express anything that you want to express, which might be confidential, um, which might talk about circumstances or situations that may have led to educational, social or economic disadvantage for you over the you know, course of life or in school or at home or whatever it might be. Uh, it's not mandatory. But if you do share, we'll keep it confidential and we'll see how we can support you. Um, we believe that this might add to the holistic assessment of your application form. So please use that space judicially, uh, judiciously and uh, um, yeah, feel free to, to write things that may not be captured anywhere else in the application form, okay? Um, I'm going to move on very quickly. I mentioned the mandatory assessments. Once you've submitted your application form, um, you have to write the assessments for your form to be considered, right? So there, there are two assessments. There's the Ashoka Aptitude Assessment for 90 minutes, and then there's the on-the-spot essay for 30 minutes, right? And broadly, if you look at both of them, they are, you know, checking for or gauging critical thinking skills, clarity of thought, um, your ability to problem solve. So neither of them really needs preparation. So you don't really have to prepare, but if you, if you want to, you can look up some of our sample questions and prompts that are on the website. Um, so the Ashoka Aptitude Assessment has been developed by Cambridge for us. It's based on the Thinking Skills Assessment. Uh, you can look that up just to give you an idea of what to expect, right? Um, and the on-the-spot essay is developed uh, by Ashoka University. Um, you know, you get two prompts, you pick one, and then you engage with that to the uh, best of your ability on the spot, right? And we grade these. They give us um, wonderful insights into just your ability to engage, to think, to be able to write and express yourself. And uh, it also helps us sort of um, see if you need any support, right? Especially in the area of writing, should you get an offer of admission. So it's 120 minutes total. And like I've said, minimal preparation required. Um, okay. Once that's done, we uh, the admissions committee does a short list for the interview round. Uh, application forms are read, evaluated along with the assessments. Uh, based on this, uh, candidates are short shortlisted for a mandatory interview. It'll be online. Um, there was a time we did in-person interviews, but COVID and other things have... Um, have uh, allowed us to move into the online space more. 
And so we'll do it on an online platform. It'll be for approximately, uh, you'll get a 45 minute slot and your interview can go anywhere between, I think 20 minutes to 45 minutes. Uh, but uh, it'll vary depending on what you have to say. It'll be from your application form and the conversation can go um, in, in, in various directions, right? Of course, academic, non-academic, personal. Um, it's really just to get to know you and also see how um, you can fit into, uh, you know, Ashoka's curriculum, into a life at Ashoka, or if Ashoka is a good fit for you, right? So uh, both ways. So that's the interview. Um, and finally, decisions. At the end of every round, uh, you could get an offer of admission. If you get an offer of admission, a firm offer of admission, all you need to do is successfully complete your grade 12. If you get a conditional offer, um, it will get converted automatically if you meet your grade 12 predicted scores. Um, you could be placed on a wait list depending on availability of seats uh, or your decision could be deferred and we will not give you a final decision till we see how you performed in your grade 12. Um, or of course, you may get a denial of admission if it's unfortunate and it's not working out for you. So all those who do get an offer of admission, a financial aid form opens. Um, it's a separate financial aid form. Uh, it's a separate process. You'll be required to submit a lot of documents and things. So it's all on the website. Please look up what you might need and prepare for it. You'll get a few days to do that. Um, our need-based financial aid process uh, is in place uh, for anyone who applies. So you're welcome to apply if you get an offer. We also have a science merit come means scholarship for high academic achievers in sciences and who want to pursue the sciences. Um, so there's some information about that as well on the, on the website. So please look that up as well. Um, or, you, or you can write to us and we can give you more information about that. Um, all this is if you get an offer of admission, right? Yeah, so I think just for me to wrap this up, I would say that education at Ashoka is holistic, it's well-rounded, it's broad, and yet you have the ability to get deeper into whatever discipline you want to. Uh, similarly, our admissions process is quite broad. There are a lot of avenues for you to express yourself in. Um, and But we want to know you, the unique you, and that is not possible for us without you know, knowing your context, right? So we can, we can only assess you holistically if we know your context. And so... Um, your story, your context, who you are really matters to us. And we do spend a lot of time all year round uh, doing our best to try and understand students to the best of applicants, students, candidates, to the best of uh, our ability. We also have a strong focus on affirmative action. So if there is any sort of disadvantage that you face, then we do want to come alongside you, support you, and see if Ashoka is a good fit for you, if Ashoka is a good place for you, then uh, we want to ensure that uh, that and opportunities made available for you there. Um, so yeah, so if you uh, want to uh, get some support, you have some questions, um, please contact our team. There's a helpline, there's a email address uh, for you to write in your queries. A lot of information is there on the website. So please feel free to, uh, to contact us and I will stop sharing my screen now and uh, hand it over back to Shoria. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Marcia. That was really informative. Uh, I'm sure our audiences will really take a lot of information from here today. Uh, so let's move on to a few questions. I think I'll give you a couple of minutes of breather and I'll, I'll take the first few questions myself and then I'll uh, put them through to you. All right. So, uh, OK, let's let me get on to a few questions over here. Uh, is there a particular cutoff for the admissions process? Uh, no, there isn't. Like Moshia has emphasized a lot, we believe in a very holistic admissions process. So we will be looking at the overall profile and there are no cutoffs uh, here at Ashoka. Uh, moving on to a few more questions. What does the mandatory Ashoka assessment comprise of? Uh, two sections mainly, problem solving and critical thinking are the two things that we'll be looking at. Uh, and uh, the assessment is based on the thinking skills assessment, which is proposed by Cambridge. Uh, so these are the two main, uh, you know, uh, things that we'll be looking at from the assessment. Uh, how should one prepare for the Ashoka aptitude assessment? I'm also seeing that a lot of students over here, uh, you know, are writing this as Ashoka aptitude test. Uh, 
uh, please keep in mind that this is not your entrance. This is just an assessment. So it's the Ashoka Aptitude Assessment. Um, so how should one prepare for the Ashoka Aptitude Assessment, especially for someone who has not taken math in their high studies? Well, there is one sample paper available on the website that you can refer to definitely. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of information available on the Cambridge Thinking Skills Assessment website as well. You can always refer to that. And apart from that, uh, you find a lot of material available all throughout, uh, you know, Internet as well. Uh, and there are various books as well that you can refer to. But like it has been already shared with you, it requires minimal amount of preparation. So uh, students who don't have maths in their senior classes, please do not worry about that. Uh, you know, the entire assessment has been conducted for all students alike. Uh, so minimal preparation is good for that. Uh, will the assessments be online or offline? The assessments and the on-the-spot essay both will be online. Uh, so do not worry about that either. Uh, I'll take a couple of more questions, Moshia, and then I'll throw some questions at you. All right. Uh, let me see how many rounds of application are there. So we have four rounds of admissions at Ashoka uh, and the first round has already started. We are in the midst of that. So please do apply early uh, to Ashoka. Uh, in case a round one application gets rejected, can they apply again? No, you can only apply in any one of the admission cycles. So please be careful about that. You can only apply once in the entire cycle. Uh, all right, Moshia, I think I'll, I'll throw a few questions off to you. Sure, sure. All right, great. So uh, in the essay regarding the fictional characters, can we talk about two characters from different books, movies, scenes, or do they have to be from the same one? No, absolutely. The more, the merrier. I mean, I would have put a few more characters in there, but my team said no. They said uh, three is too much. Uh, we don't want to stress out the students. So two is great, but please. And, you know, they could be across ages, right? So it doesn't have to be somebody, uh, some character who is your age, or it, it just could be, an, it could be somebody from another era altogether, right? But fictional, yes. So uh, please don't write like Elon Musk and he's not fictional. Right. All right. Uh, does our CUET scores give us uh, an edge as an applicant? And that also applies for the SAT as well. We have a similar question. So if you can just shed some light on that as well. So I'll tell you, so because we have a mandatory assessment of our own, right, That's uh, that trumps in a sense all of this because everybody takes it. But not everybody takes the SAT or the ACT. Um, and the CUET, unfortunately, we don't know when next year CUET will happen unless you've taken it this year and you wish to apply for next year's admission, right? Um, so what we will do is we look at all of these uh, assessments that you may have taken, uh, one or two or more, along with your grade 12 scores or predictor scores, and we look at them a bit collectively, and we usually look at the one that you have done the best in. So... Um, it definitely adds value, right? So if you've done well in your SAT, um, it'll help your application form. So we will definitely look at it. It's a, it's a useful input, I would say. But I would not say that any part of the application form trumps any other part of the application form. Uh, we look at everything very collectively. So hopefully, um, uh, you know, if something is not working out for you, maybe something else will work out for you, right? Maybe many other things will work out for you. So don't get stressed by that, but just represent what you have. And uh, and these are not mandatory. So if you if you don't want to put down your scores, we're not going to hold that against you either. So you can decide. But if you've got a good score, you want to put it down, please, by all means. do. All right, great. Uh, okay. So in the first question of the essay, if I want to discuss a political issue, will I be judged if my political views are contrary to the popular belief? It'd be fantastic if your political views are contrary to the popular belief, but that would, uh, you would have to define what is the popular belief. So I don't know if you know, uh, or I know what the popular belief is, right? Um, by all means, and I think, uh, I think a lot of students um, at university, you know, I mean, if I had to answer this holistically, university is the space for us to discuss, right? That's the aim of this question. We're hoping that you have conversations, uh, you know, 
early morning conversations, afternoon conversations, evening conversations, late night conversations, because conversations are a huge part of learning. So if it's politics, if it's economics, if it's views, if it's, you know, about sociological issues, right? If it's about, it doesn't matter what it is. So nothing will be used um, against you. It'll be really great to see very diverse views, right? If that's what you're passionate about. So let me just say, and I didn't talk about it too much when I went through the presentation, but let me just say that that particular prompt, the first one, the reason for that prompt is because we want to know what you're talking about, right? For example, if I'm very interested to talk about gender issues, right? And say, that's that's something that I mentioned in that essay. Um, Imagine I don't know anything about gender. I've read nothing about it, right? And I mentioned that. I would not be able to write 400 words up on that prompt. So hopefully, whatever it is that you write, a uh, political issue or not, you're, it's something that you've really engaged with so that you can write your views, write opposing views, write what you think, like use that space well. But it's not to judge you at all. It's really to understand um, you know, what you're engaging with. And maybe you do want to study political science. So that's even more fantastic, right? Or maybe you want to study history. So look at it in a very holistic way, right? And trust me when I say this, because uh, I really feel that this is, I mean, not feel, it is really what we do at the admissions office, right? Uh, so hopefully you'll take my word for it. Yes, <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to answer the next question very quickly. Are the essay topics same for every round? Yes, the application will stay consistent through the four rounds. So the questions will not change for you. Uh, for you, Marcia, I have a question over here. Uh, should the personal essay state the reason for applying to Ashoka or stating personal interests will do? And also we have another part to that. Uh, do the essays have to be factual or can they be entirely personal? So these are personal essays. And like I had mentioned when I did my little presentation, that please don't write your statement of purpose. We know that you want to apply to Ashoka, right? You don't have to tell us why you want to apply to Ashoka. We're hoping that it's because you want to get a good education. That's enough for us. So it's not a statement of purpose. We don't want you to write about the courses at Ashoka or Ashoka as a university. We really just want you to address the essay prompts, right? Because what we're looking for through those prompts is what we're looking for. We're not looking for anything else. So please don't use that space. So these are personal essays. These are about you. Uh, there's no place for that in those two essay prompts for an SOP uh, sort of essay, right? Where you're writing a statement of purpose or where you're writing um, about, you know, why you want to come to Ashoka and things like that. Okay, so please don't do that. That will not really work in your favor. Great. All right, so moving on, uh, when will the online mock test be available? So, you know, between once the submission date is done for any round, between the submission date and the uh, actual assessment date, we do send out links for demos, for a demo exam, just to familiarize you with the process. So it'll be somewhere between those days. So it won't be before the submission deadline for the round. Uh, I would say, and I think we open op open it up for maybe 24 to 48 hours. So you can just test and see that everything's working um, just to give you a feel of what the assessment day is going to be like. Yes, great. Uh, does the score in the Ashoka Academic Assessment also hold value when merit-based scholarship is being considered or is it only my school performance? So, oh, so the science merit come um, merit come means scholarship that has been launched last year. They have a number of scores that they accept, um, and they will they are connected to either um, some national tests that are available, right? So I think some uh, particular like JE scores and others, if you have taken those, or your class twelve scores. Um, we don't use the Ashoka Aptitude Assessment Score for that. Right. Uh, how can a student with special needs take the Ashoka uh, Aptitude Assessment? So one is we do give compensatory time. If you indicate in your form in the support section, um, if you need, it would just be depending on what sort of need you have. If you have a need for a scribe, if you have a need for... Um, if it's a visually impaired student and they need particular software, we will connect with you and we will check with you if you have that software. So we will 
please indicate at the support section in the form and we will uh, reach out to you. If it's about compensatory time, we will still reach out to you and let you know if you're getting it or not. All right. Uh, all right, Moshi, I'm just going to take the next few questions very, very quickly. Uh, so what can you consider a good score in the Ashoka aptitude assessment? Is there a qualifying person? Uh, well, no, not at all. These are all for us. So in fact, we will not be sharing any of that with you. You'll be directly informed if you are shortlisted for the interview. So there is no qualifying percentage for that. Uh, and please, Moshe, feel free to correct me if I go wrong anywhere. Uh, I have not given any standardized tests. Will that be a downside? Uh, will that be a downside? Uh, not at all. Not at all. That will not be a downside at all. The Ashoka assessment is mandatory. So you have to appear for that to complete your entire application process. Other than that, if you feel comfortable in sharing any other scores, please feel free to do that. Like Moshe has already said, we look at the best score that you give to us uh, compared to the assessment. So if you feel comfortable, then well and good. If not, there is no downside at all. Is there a tentative date for the first round applicants to give the Ashoka aptitude assessment? Yes, the 4th of December is the uh, assessment date for the first round of admissions. So that's when you'll have to sit for your assessment. Uh, if I write other exams, CUET, SAT, do I still have to give the assessment, Ashoka assessment? Absolutely, you have to. The Ashoka aptitude assessment is mandatory, so you have to sit for that. All right, so uh, let me throw another question at you, Mercia. Uh, what would be preferable an LOR from my CEO of uh, my previous school uh, and someone I have worked with till grade 10 or a teacher from my new school uh, who has taught me from 11th and 12th grade? I would say whoever know, whoever you think knows you better. If you worked with the CEO of your previous school, and you've worked extensively and they really seem to know you well, perfect. But if you feel that, you know, they know me till class 10, they don't really know how I've turned out in class 11 and 12, which is more recent, but this teacher that I'm studying with has understood me in a way uh, that I am now in the present and might be able to add more value, uh, then I would say go with the teacher. It's really your choice, right? Um, but like I said before, don't go by designations really go by somebody who knows you well. So be careful when you choose and pick and choose well and allow them to really represent you uh, because that's probably the only um, external input we get in the application form and it really helps us. Yes, great. Uh, all right, so moving on, uh, I would like to apply I would like to apply in the first round, but the AAP date is clashing with my pre vote one examinations. Uh, is it possible that I give my AAP in round two, but apply in the first round? Okay, so let me just be very clear on this. The AAA, uh, the Ashoka assessments date is, on, is always on a Sunday. You try to ensure that it doesn't clash with anything. Um, it'll be for 120 minutes. So it's two hours. If you can take those two hours, then please submit your form in round one. Please write the assessments. If you know 100% that you cannot write the assessments in round one, then please don't submit your application form. Because what happens is then your application form will get annulled. It won't be evaluated and you won't get a chance to write your assessment in the next round. So I would say be careful. Um, if you can take two hours and do it, because we open the assessments from around 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, so you do have a long day, a window for you to apply, uh, for you to, I'm sorry, for you to write the assessments um, on, on that Sunday. So, uh, you know, I would highly recommend that you take two hours off and do it. Maybe do it in the morning and then spend the rest of the day studying for your pre boards But if you think it's going to be problematic, then I would say please only apply in, uh, in January in round two. Right. All right. So uh, uh, my child is an IB school, which releases the predicted scores only in early December. Do we have the option to apply in the first round, but with self-predicted scores? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, all right. Let me move on to a few uh, general questions over here. Uh, what is the eligibility criteria for A-level students to apply to Ashoka? You need to have uh, three A-level courses. That's it. Um, 
if you have if you have less than three A level courses, then you cannot apply. So you need and and you don't need to have English mandatorily. You don't need to have any specific course, but you need to have three subjects that you're doing your uh, A levels. In. You yep. could have additional AS levels, maybe right. a couple if you are doing. That's fine, but we are interested in the three A levels. Right. Uh, in a four-year gra graduation course, in which year does a student make the final choice for subject combinations and majors? Can additional subjects be pursued as non-credit courses? So the system remains the same. Let me just say a word here about the three or four year uh, issue that, you know, because now we come under the national education policy, the NEP. Uh, so we, we uh, you are applying for the 2023 intake. However, um, you could exit after three years with the BABSC honors, um, or you could exit after four years with the BABSC honors with research. Uh, so you could you could decide. We obviously would recommend the four years. We think uh, uh, it would be better, but you could still exit after three years. Um, so given in light of this, some things have changed in terms of the credits you need. There's a slight change in credits. There's a component of internships um, that have been um, 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 started now, introduced uh, by the NEP. Uh, but in terms of when you declare your major, that will remain the same. So that will be at the end of the third semester uh, is when you declare your major. Uh, and following that, you can do courses toward um, your major. Um, but, there, but if you are doing the four-year program, there are some specific requirements, right? Because it is with research. There'll be more information on this coming out soon. We are quite in the early stages of this. But... Um, but even generally, you will have space to do, uh, you know, courses like you can do a minor, you can do uh, um, a concentration. So a minor is six credits, a concent uh, sorry, six courses, a, a concentration is four courses. You could do that. You could just audit some courses. So at Ashoka, what I've noticed over the years is that students don't just do the required courses they need to graduate. They're, most of them are always doing a lot more because they just, you know, love these courses. There are interesting courses that come up and, you know, sometimes you just audit a course or you actually take the course because you just want to be a part of it. Um, so, but, but the declaration of your major would still be at the end of the third semester. Right, all right, great. So I'm just gonna take up the next few questions over here. Uh, is it important to submit my 12th grade half yearly marks? Uh, no, we look at the predicted grades only. So please make sure you are doing that. Uh, uh, what is the application fee and when are we supposed to pay it? There is no application fee involved uh, with, the Ashoka, uh, assess, uh, with the Ashoka application process. So you don't have to pay it at any time. Uh, if, uh, all right, so I have a question over here. Uh, what does the condition of look like? For example, does it specify any final grade or a threshold that the student must score in their board? examination. Uh, so I believe, Mercia, that uh, they have to meet their predicted scores that they have given to us usually for and a this conditional is offer. For a conditional, yeah. So conditional offer basically will say that you will, your offer, your conditional offer will get automatically converted to a firm offer if you meet your predicted scores. So that's the only time you get a conditional, uh, um, you know, offer. Um, so it, it, it's just an automatic convert. So then we'd, uh, we, if we see that you've met it, then you will just get a firm off. Right. All right. So let's move on to a few financial aid questions over here. Uh, how is the financial aid application different from confirmed offer candidates and other candidates? So other candidates don't have access to the financial aid form. You only get access to the financial aid form if you get a firm offer of admission. Um, the, uh, the application form for financial aid is uh, based on um, your financial documents, um, whether it's like if, you're, if your family, your parents are salaried, then, you know, their documents, if there's some other, um, you know, sort of documents, assets and things. So basically, if I had to overall sort of summarize the financial aid process, it's need-based. What we're trying to say is, yes, we do understand that Ashoka's fees is uh, on the higher side, right? Uh, for those who can afford to uh, pay it and have the resources and the means and availability 
um, and access to these resources. Uh, we obviously encourage you to um, go ahead and, you know, um, take care of your own fees and so on. But for those who do get an offer of admission, but uh, you don't have access to resources or you don't have access to, um, you know, finances to pay your fees, then you please feel free to apply. And we do have resources where we are, we are careful with it, but we do want to give students um, who, you know, we've made an offer, so which means we want you to study at Ashoka, right? So we want to be able to fill that gap um, to whatever you can pay versus what Ashoka's fees is. So we want to bridge that gap. So that's sort of where we are coming from. So we, we are generous. Um, but we also have a proper process in place. And there's a committee that sits and looks at all the documents and decides, uh, you know, whether somebody gets aid or not, or whether and what level of aid that is or what person. Is. So hopefully this will sort of summarize that conversation. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, when calculating the financial aid, are the liabilities like pre-existing loans of parents kept in mind along with their income? Yes. Yes. I think it's a very holistic process again. So they do look at a lot of things. Um, you know, what you have, what you don't have, what uh, what the family's expenses are. I mean, we're very mindful of a lot of things. I honestly am not part of the financial aid office. So I don't want to uh, say, say I hopefully I'm not saying anything incorrect, but to the best of my knowledge, I do know that the process is very detailed, very holistic, very thorough. And, uh, you know, um, hopefully families that can afford it are doing enough financial planning to be able to pay for the fees. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, so I'm just going to answer the next question very, very quickly. How much financial aid does, aid does Ashoka provide? So Ashoka provides the financial aid anywhere ranging from a 25% uh, fee waiver on the tuition to a full 100% waiver on the entire fee. Uh, and uh, what are the scholarship opportunities provided at Ashoka University? for UG courses. So obviously we have our need based financial aid uh, and we also offer the merit come mean scholarship for the computer sciences and the sciences program. Uh, are no merit based scholarships available for non sciences students? Well, we have the need based financial aid, which Mercia already has emphasized on how well it works. And it's a very holistic process as well. So please feel free to apply for the need based financial aid. Uh, all right. Uh, so moving on, I think, Moshia, we'll quickly wrap up with the, just a few more questions, if that's all right with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so let me just see over here. If a student is a foreign citizen but has graduated from 12th Standard in India through the CBSC student uh, system, sorry, uh, would they apply as an international student? So there is a section in the personal details where we ask about your nationality, where your country. So... Um, so I don't know who you are, but let me just try and answer this. Uh, if you have, if you don't have Indian citizenship, right? That's fine. The process is the same, um, regardless of where you studied. I and mean, if you studied in India um, and you don't have Indian citizenship, that's okay as well, or vice versa. Um, so don't worry about it. Our process is exactly the same. And I also want to say this, which probably might be the question is that our fee structure is also exactly the same, whether you're an Indian student or an international student, which I know in many countries it's not, where it's higher if you're an international student, but we don't have that. Um, so for us, the process is exactly the same uh, for Indian students, international students. There isn't anything that uh, is different really in the admissions and in the application or admissions process. Uh, we also, in fact, if you are on different time zone, the reason for having even the assessment day sort of stretch long is because, you know, hopefully you'll be able to adjust your time a little bit uh, wherever you are to be able to uh, write the assessments. Even the interview slots, we do have day long interview slots. So hopefully you can, you know, if you do get shortlisted for the interview, you can pick a slot. Um, so you pick your slots for interview. Everybody picks their own slot. So you can pick a slot that is convenient for you. Right, absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, for personal details, can I submit a DigiLocker copy of Aadhaar card for self-identification? Hmm, that's a good question. I have not been asked that before. Uh, it might work. If there is an issue with that, we will reach out to you. So please go ahead and submit that. I think DigiLocker, from what I know, works for us, even for class 12 
um, scores, if they have final scores. So I suppose it would work. So please go ahead and submit it. As long as nothing is password protected. So that is the main issue. So ensure that nothing is password protected. Right. And just make sure everything is visible and clearly you know, yeah. readable. As long as it's that, I think it should be all right. Uh, all right. If my parents are retired, do I need to mention their last employer's name in the family information section? No, I don't need. I don't think you need to. But you should need to mention that they're retired, and maybe and there is a spot for a little note that you can write about what they do or what they've done. So uh, that's important. We're really looking at the current and not the past. So it would be helpful to know. We also ask about what your parents, you know, if they've. To what, to what level of education they have. It just gives an, us a bit of an idea of your own personal and educational uh, background as well. Um, and so you can fill in those details, but if they're retired, um, you don't have to, unless you want to write it in the note, you don't have to mention. Yes, great. All right, Moshi, I'm just gonna take a couple of more questions and then I'll just throw it back to you and we'll uh, wrap it up. Uh, so what are the advantages of applying in the first two rounds? Well. The advantages are, are great. Uh, you get a confirmed offer of admission as early as the month of January if you apply in the first round. Uh, you do not require your 12th marks to apply to Ashoka and get a confirmed offer of admission as well as a confirmed offer of financial aid as well. Um, and you know, the main advantage obviously is that once you get a confirmed offer of admission, say you apply early, then you're free for the rest of the year to focus on your boards, study, you know, focus on yourself, focus on your academics, and at least one thing is out of the way. So that's probably the biggest advantage of applying early to Ashoka. Um, I'll just skim through a few more questions that I seem to have missed. Our school does not does not issue certificates for all non-academic activities. Uh, what should I do in such cases? Can we upload any sort of proof? Well, uh, you know, you definitely can do that. We look at any photos, any videos, if you have you know, links to your blog, your Insta pages, anything and everything. And we also encourage students to make Google Slides if possible, uh, you know, and share the link of them uh, in the description box, uh, you know, make it neat and clear and precise. We look at the depth in your engagement, the depth in your learning, you know, what motivates you to do the things that you do. So anything at all that you can share with us, please do so, uh, because that makes for a good profile as well. Uh, can I fill more than three activities uh, in the activity section? You can fill up to five activities, Moshe, if I'm not wrong. Oh, three only, three. So, yeah. So, you need to prioritize. So, we have brought it down to three. We've mandated it. And we want you to prioritize. So, spend a little bit of time prioritizing. All right. So, like Moshe said, three activities. So, please prioritize your activities well and share them with us. Um, all right. Let me just go through a few more questions. All right. I have a very interesting question over here, Moshe. Uh, can the characters uh, of the essay be in other languages such as Bangla? They can. Hopefully you will be, uh, the characters can be, and hopefully you will be able to describe them well to us in English because uh, we, uh, the application form is to be submitted in English, right? So of course you can pick up, you could pick characters from any, uh, you know, maybe it's like a comic book that you like in some other language and there's a character that really fascinates you there, right? By all means, and maybe you can write a little description for us about that 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 character, and we also ask you as to why you would pick that person, right? So, and 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 trust me, people who'll be reading the app would would probably uh, look up that character as well, and probably learn something from your essays. So, yeah. Yes. All right. Great. Uh, is the on the spot essay held on campus? No. The on the spot essay and the assessment is online. So it, it's not going to be held at the campus at all. Uh, and let me just see. Um, I'll also add here that yep. the interviews are also online. So uh, you can do campus tours if you want. There's a virtual uh, tour available. There are weekly two days, I think, where we have campus tours available. So you could do that on your own independently. You can sign up for those on our website and do those. But none of the admissions process currently is held physically, uh, either on campus or on any other location. Great. All right. I think, Moshi, I'm just going to ask you about two or three more questions. Yeah, I think that should be good. Uh, all right. So the first one is, please share some strategies to tackle the on-the-spot essay. Okay, so like we had said that you don't have to prepare a lot. I would say ideally what you could do is you could 
read the prompt, maybe read it twice, and then uh, write your little outline on the screen, like that you're, write an outline first. Um, you know, an outline for any essay is simple. You don't have to start with the introduction. You start with the body. Um, you write your main key points that you want to talk about. It's helpful if you give multiple perspectives. You know, don't just say, this is what I think and only go down that path. It would be helpful if you say, uh, here are some views, but this is what I think, right? So that is your body. Um, then you write your conclusion because that will really state what your view is on that topic, right? And all the topics are about really understanding what is your view, right? So we give you various prompts and you read it. You don't have to prepare for anything. You pick one and you 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 say from your pre-existing knowledge that this is what I believe. But then be able to think for a couple of minutes about what are some other views that people have, right? So present that, present your view, conclude the essay, go on top and write your introduction. I would say this is just a standard practice for any essay you write anywhere in the world for any reason, right? And so this would help. If you remember a quote or so, that's fine, but not needed at all. We really want to see how you're able to engage with that prompt, but it'll really help if you can look at it from multiple sort of viewpoints. Uh, and it could be, um, it could be anything. The prompt could be anything. You really don't have to prepare. So that's the most fun thing about the on-the-spot essay. But please note, you have only 30 minutes. So you have to do all of that in 30 minutes and try to wrap it up. Right. Uh, there are no word limits to it, but it is bound by time, which is 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. No word limits, but bound by time. So the minute 30 minutes are up, it'll close, right? And automatically submit. So uh, ensure that you keep an eye on that, on that clock. Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, can you please give us some insight on the interview in terms of what kind of questions may be asked? So, yes. Um, so the interview is really to start with sort of hearing from you, right? It could be anyway. It just depends on who's interviewing you, right? I have a particular style of interviewing, um, but I am a particular kind of person, right? So similarly, the people who are interviewing from the team, from the admissions office, others who are interviewing, um, but one thing I can say is all of us are going to really want to hear from you and we're going to pick it up from your application form. So if you've put something in your application form that's not really who you are, it might come up and then you may not be able to justify that in that conversation. So, so the application form is very important in the interview. And so we'll pick up various parts from the interview. We'll discuss your academic interests. We'll discuss your non-academic interests. We may even discuss things that you are that are happening in the world around you, right? To sort of understand what are you engaging with. Um, there are times where, you know, you can pick the topic yourself and we can discuss it, right? So with what's comfortable with you. So overall, we are getting to know you. Uh, that's primarily what we're doing. We're also checking the veracity of your form with you as to, you know, if that's aligned. Uh, we also are gauging to see that if for a liberal arts and sciences education that is, you know, like I said, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, holistic in nature, if you are somebody who is a good fit for that and vice versa, if Ashoka is a good fit for you and the kind of passions and interests you have, and if we would be actually a place for you to succeed. So don't go, there's nothing called trying to crack the interview. Like think of it as a conversation. Think of it as a genuine, honest conversation in a safe space where you can really talk about you know, things you enjoy, things you dislike. So there's no sort of boundary, um, but you can decide how the conversation can go as well. So I would say, don't be anxious, don't be nervous, just be yourself, enjoy the conversation and be in that moment, right? Don't try and be like, am I saying the right thing? Is this the right answer? So there are no right answers. There are no wrong answers either. So it's a conversation. So enjoy the conversation and be in that moment. It's very helpful. And I can just say out of experience, uh, I've done a few thousand interviews at Ashoka and I can say that many of the conversations have been fantastic. And I have come away learning about new books, learning about music, learning about, you know, um, activities that students are doing, things that they're engaging with. I mean, I've learned a lot from those interactions myself. And so I think um, come there to, you know, sort of let us learn from you, but also also maybe learn from that conversation in itself. And I think that'll be, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun actually. So that's all I can say. 
Great. All right. Thanks, Moshe, for that really, really insightful tip. Um, I think we can wrap it up. Any last words of advice, Moshe? Any last tips that you would like to share with the audience for their profile, for their application, for the entire process? Yes. One thing I'd really like to say is that, please, two things. One is use the application form space well. Write whatever you want to write in it. If you feel it's on your heart and you want to share, find a space to share that, okay? It'll come in handy for us as we're evaluating. The second and last thing I'd like to say is the process can be, since you are since you are the one applying and I'm not, I know the process can be very uh, anxiety-inducing and stressful. And sometimes maybe you're not stressed, but maybe your family is stressed, Right. So you have to deal with their stress, your stress, and all of that, you know, deadlines, submissions, assessments, schoolwork, whatever it might be. But please don't be anxious because, um, okay, it's hard to say don't be anxious. You can be anxious a little bit. That's okay. But if at all you feel anxious and you feel stress and you need someone to talk to, you can write to us. Um, there are people to support you. I would say just do your best. And, you know, if Ashoka is where you're meant to be, you will be at Ashoka. Nothing will stop you from that. So mm -hmm. I would say that would be my sort of parting parting advice. So, yeah, and enjoy the process. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a wonderful process. Enjoy the process of writing the essays. Enjoy the process of the form, the assessments, the interview, if you make it to that. Just enjoy the process. It's a, it's, it's a fun process. So I can assure you that. All right, great. Thank you so much, Moshe. Thank you. Uh, all right, everyone. With that, we come to the end of today's session. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope that this webinar was helpful in understanding about Ashoka's undergraduate program. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you could take a minute of your time to share your valuable feedback with us. The link to the feedback form is provided in the chat box. Please note that the recording of this session will be available on uh, Ashoka's YouTube channel in case you would like to share it with your friends. Our next webinar is scheduled for the 4th of November from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, this webinar will be conducted by the, office, by the Office of Financial Aid at Ashoka University uh, and will shed light on fee waivers and sciences scholarship available to students. The, uh, the registration link for the same uh, is available in the chat box. Before we end the session today, I would once again like to inform our audience that the applications for round one of the undergraduate program starting next year, August 2023, are open. The deadline for round one is the 23rd of November, 2022. I would strongly encourage students to start early and have access to personalized mentorship from our academic counselors and get a confirmed offer of admission and financial aid even before the final board results are announced. So please do not miss this opportunity to apply early to Ashoka. If you have any further questions, you can write to us at ugapply at the rate ashoka.edu.in or contact us on the number given on the screen. And this brings us to the end of the session today. Please take care and stay safe. Thanks a lot.